Hi, this is Sandra Ponce de Leon, and welcome to VIP Vino. I've got a very important person here with me today, Maria Agneva. Uh, thank you for joining me, Maria. Thank you for having me. Uh, Maria, you are the Director of Social Media for Attensity, and Attensity is a, uh, an enterprise technology for listening and monitoring conversations online. Right? Absolutely. That's a better elevator pitch than I've ever given, so I should be afraid for my job. So basically what we do is, the, the problem is that social media is, there are huge volumes, right? People are talking on Twitter, they're going to talk about you no matter what, they're blogging about you, so you need to listen and you need to, even beyond that, you need to understand what's actually going on, what the trends are, and you need tools to engage, and that's where we come in. That's great. That's great. Well, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about um, Attensity and some of your findings. Um, but before that, let's have some bubbles. We're drinking a, a Spanish cava in honor of the winners of the World Cup, which is coming up, Spain. Uh, cheers. And it's, a, it's called Avino. So let's, let's have a taste, shall we? Absolutely. little citrusy. It's dry. It's um, it's very pleasant. I like. It. I like it too. It's very nice. Tiny little bubbles, which are good. That's good. A sign of quality. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, um, talking about the World Cup, we've got World Cup mania happening right now. It's uh, Spain versus the Netherlands. Obviously, I'm a Spanish fan, uh, and so, you know, I know that the chatter online isn't necessarily predictive of who's going to win. That's why we've got Paul the octopus. Um, but so. You know what? What is all, what's the sentiment around the game? You know who's favored to win. So actually, it's pretty even. So in terms of volume, and you can check out our blog at blog.intensity.com for the full scoop. Uh, but here's a brief recap. Um, it's actually really, really close. So Spain just has a tiny smidge more um, than the Netherlands in terms of volume, but the Netherlands is slightly more positively colored. So who knows, right? It's not based on social media, really. It's based on skill. Paul, so. the, Paul, Paul the octopus knows. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Only time will tell. So. Right, right. Um, well, very cool. So I was reading about um, and actually following your, your travels recently, um, and you actually got stuck in a cloud, so to speak. And we're not talking tag cloud here. We're talking a real volcanic ash cloud. And during the, those issues, you were you you turn to social media to help you. So tell us a little bit about that experience. What was that like? Absolutely. So I was, I was in Russia. I was traveling to see my family. And I was trying to get back to the States. And I couldn't. And the company whose airline I was, I was taking uh, was not able to help me in person or on the phone. So I was fresh out of options. Um, and I approached them on Twitter. And unfortunately, their response was, go to the 800 number, go to the web page, and, you know, it was kind of a cookie-cutter um, response, and it didn't really add value to me beyond what I already knew. Mm -hmm. um, so the moral of the story is here that brands, when you're engaging on Twitter, it's not enough to just put out your message out there, and it's not enough to respond back with a canned response. You really have to hustle behind the scene and establish collaborative channels within your organization to actually help. Um, the social customer. And that's really what social CRM um, hinges upon, right? Are you able to set up your organization so you can talk to each other and solve problems to the, for the customers that are approaching you in social media, on email, and other channels? Right, right. And the social customer is a customer that is becoming more and more present in today's world of social media. So they expect to get their customer service issues handled via the social channels. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, right. So in terms of social CRM, when I think of CRM, I think of the Salesforce model and you know customer uh, relationship management, a, a tool to help me log conversations. Well, what exactly is the extension of CRM into social? So I think that's kind of a dangerous way to think about social okay. CRM because it's not just a bolt-on on top of your CRM. It's, it's not really a customer relationship model anymore because customers are actually managing you, and that's more like it. right? Are you able to uh, work together as an organization? Have you set up the necessary collaborative processes to actually help the social customer? And taking it a step further, are you able to collaborate with the social customer 
to give them the product that they actually want, right? So listening becomes key, analysis becomes key, um, and you know, really setting up your organization culturally first and right. process-wise second. And of course, capturing the conversations, right. you need to be able to do that too, obviously. Right, well I think that's also sort of the lesson learned for brands and brand marketing in general. You're not in control of your brand anymore. And You're not. It means you have to have a collaborative process with your customers. Uh, and better yet, even if your customers are helping you manage the brand and, and um, giving each other customer service. If you involve your customers in the process of making the product with you, that creates um, advocacy. And that's ultimately what's, what spreads positive word of mouth. That's great. Well, on that note, um, it's all about social CRM and collaborative uh, processes. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. Go Spain. <laughs> go Europe. Whoever Cheers. wins, you know, we'll see, we'll see. Thank you. Thank you.